Neurology quiz number 25. What is glial fibrillary acidic protein or GFAP astrocytopathy? This is an inflammatory autoimmune meningoencephalitis related to GFAP antibodies. It usually occurs in adults after age 40, though rare cases have been described in children. Preceding flu-like symptoms like fever, cough, rhinorrhea occur in up to two-thirds of patients. Subsequently, patients develop headache, neck stiffness, photophobia, encephalopathy with seizures, cognitive and psychiatric disturbances. Spinal cord involvement can occur, but myelopathic symptoms are mild. Blurred vision is the commonest visual symptom. Bilateral disc edema is noted, but CSF opening pressure is often normal. Other neurological features include tremor, myoclonus, chorea, ataxia, dysautonomia, and neuropathy. GFA P antibody is positive. It is best tested for in the CSF as serum positivity alone carries risk of false positives. CSF shows lymphocytic pleocytosis, high protein, and oligoclonal bands may be positive. An underlying neoplasm, particularly ovarian teratoma, has been reported in up to 30% of cases in some series. Coexistent NMDA receptor antibodies and NMO antibodies may be detected. Brain MRI may show leptomeningeal enhancement and characteristic radial perivascular enhancement perpendicular to the ventricles. T2 hyperintensities may be seen in the subcortical white matter, brainstem and cerebellum. In the spinal cord, a longitudinally extensive faint T2 hyperintensity may be seen. Differential diagnosis includes neurosarcoidosis, CNS lymphoma, meningeal carcinomatosis, infectious meningitis, NMOST, etc. The condition is very responsive to steroid and recommended management is IV solimedrol followed by high dose oral steroid for three to six months and then a slow taper as rapid tapering can lead to a relapse. Relapses during or after steroid taper can occur in up to 20% and may require use of steroid sparing agents. MRI scans from a patient with this condition from the paper by Wang et al. in BMC Neurology in 2020. The first scan is an actual T1 post-contrast MRI showing radial pattern of linear periventricular post-gadolinium enhancement. The second scan is an actual T2 flare MRI showing bilateral cortical and subcortical hyperintensities. And the third scan is a sagittal T2 MRI showing patchy hyperintensities in the cervical spinal cord. What are the criteria for vestibular migraine? The criteria is described in the International Classification of Headache Disorders number no. 3 appendix are as follows. A. Patient should have vestibular symptoms of moderate or severe intensity lasting 5 minutes to 72 hours. B. At least half of these episodes should be accompanied by one of the following migraineous features. Number one, headache with at least two of the following four features. Unilateral location, pulsating quality, moderate or severe intensity, aggravation by routine physical activity. Number two, photophobia and phonophobia. And number three, visual aura. C. There should be a current or past history of migraine with aura or migraine without aura. Four, at least five episodes fulfilling criteria A and B. What are the neurological conditions associated with GAD65 or glutamic acid decarboxylase antibodies? GAD is a pyridoxal 5-phosphate dependent enzyme and the rate limiting step in the synthesis of GABA. GAD is not only found in the brain and pancreatic beta cells, but is also found in lower amounts in the liver, kidneys, adrenal glands, ovaries, and testes. There are two GAD isoforms, 65 and 67. Within the central nervous system, 65 localizes to the synaptic vesicles, and its activity increases in response to demands for GABA. 67 localizes to the cytoplasm and generates a steady basal GABA level. Anti-GAD antibodies are specific for either isoform 
Anti-GAD 65 antibody associated diseases include the following, stiff person syndrome, some cases of progressive encephalomyelitis with rigidity and myoclonus or perm, cerebellar ataxia, autoimmune epilepsy and limbic encephalitis. GAD-65 antibodies are also found in type 1 diabetes mellitus. They are present in up to 80% of patients and first-degree relatives and serve as a marker for the disease and as a risk predictor.